Are you part of the business development of a CRO or you are searching for new CRO for your clinical trial? Then you have to watch this video. Hi guys, it's David. In today's episode, I'll be talking about a project on which we have supported our client back in 2019. We have signed an agreement with a biotech company who was searching at that time CRO for performing their clinical trial. So this was pretty huge clinical trial. They were searching for more than 1000 patients globally and they wanted to select big CRO which has good connection with their sites, who knows the landscape and who is specialized in the indication. The client knows from, knew from the beginning where exactly they want to uh, perform the clinical trial because we have helped them with the analysis on the prevalence and incidence on the trial. So they had already some nice and solid data before starting the process of the CRO selection. How did it go? And um, what were the positive aspects of each and also the negative aspects of each CRO? I'll be talking about in this episode. So stick around with me for next couple of minutes because if you are doing the business development in the CRO and pharma industry, this is a must watch for you. Before starting the whole process of the bid defense and of the CRO selection, we have conducted a short analysis for the best countries to be selected for the trial so that the client has already some, some uh, background information on that. So we decided to contact together along with the biotech client five CROs and I will be talking about each and every single one of them. What they proposed, how did they communicate with the client, where were their mistakes and which were their smart moves in terms of the communication and going forward to winning the award. In order not to breach any confidentiality, we have three CROs which started with letter P and two CROs who started with letter S. I will go forward and I will start with the first S. So the first S, the first CRO has created an offer which was worth 277,000 euro. This included well, they say with discount 50,000 euro, but we know how the discounts are working. They have included full scope analysis for the feasibility, the regulatory, and they also included EDC and laboratory vendor um, selection. The business development representative, he didn't have any special communication or he didn't try to do any special particular bond with the client. What they did is that they have received the request for proposal from the client, they have prepared the offer and they have returned it to the client. They didn't ask for any follow-up TC, they didn't ask for any special feedback, what did you don't like, what was the particular case that uh, you didn't decide to select us. So these are already the couple of um, steps that you can see that the dedication to this client or of, um, from this CRO to the client is not very special and for me as a client it is really important CRO to show that they care about the project because if you don't care about my project then do you care about other projects? Also the CRO has proposed 19 countries to be contacted with first reach out of 600 sites and identifying 200. Why is this happening? The more sites you contact, on the more sites you do the feasibility, the more money you get. Mm, for me, this first CRO with letter S was not performing the whole process of bid defense very well because of the lack of communication and simply there wasn't this spark that every client is searching for. So the second CRO that starts with letter S, this was a little bit better case, but um, so they have prepared the proposal for performing feasibility and the regulatory support. And they decided for 31 countries, which is huge amount of countries and 
trust me, the indication the client was searching for is not that massively spread in 31 countries. You can see already first red light, the bid defense team is not as well aware of the indication they are supposed to work on. They decided to contact 750 sites in the initial feasibility outreach. After the client was really surprised by the high number, the CRO immediately decided to lower the number on 500 sites as an initial outreach, out of which identified should be 250 sites. Again, this is extensive number. One of the other mistakes that the, the S, second S CRO did is that when they asked for the follow-up call, um, they kind of tried to sell themselves on purpose. So whatever the sponsor's comments were, they were keen on making the changes, they were keen on making it how the client wants, and one of the biggest hurdles I have seen in the process of bid, uh, bid defense is that they did not know their internal procedures. Um, and this is a big mistake. If you are doing the bid defense process, you have to know each and every step in your organization that you are doing. Okay, so now we will start with the better proposals of the three P's and I liked the way of the communication of the initial proposal. There were some hurdles, but in general, these CROs have presented themselves very well. So I would start with the first P. This CRO, they have offered really good services, full scope, EDC, um, then they have their own laboratory so and they understood what the client wants. The client wanted to do sort of prophylactic submission in, in certain countries in order to see whether they will get the approval for the placebo because this was the biggest question mark for the client which the previous two CROs couldn't understand from the initial message. So uh, this CRO has presented themselves pretty well they decided to contact 20 countries to reach out 200 sites and uh, actually to, to identify 200 sites. So you can see there is no difference in initial contact and then selected sites. They, they told directly, we are going to 20 countries, we'll select 20 sites. Very straightforward. I liked the approach. So, and um, the offer also was pretty nice. This discount that they have proposed, you could really see that this is discount. And um, yeah, so the, the initial offer for the round one of the bid defense was 225,000 euro with the discount, which in this case you could see the discount. And I like it. Not only that they have made reasonable proposal, they have provided reasonable background information on the indication. So from the first, um, proposal you could see they understand the indication you are searching for but they also made very nice price-wise proposals so the sponsor was very happy with this solution and that's why they decided to move forward also in the follow-up calls which were performed afterwards the CRO always kept kind of like a good communication and you could see that there is a development and that was also one of the reasons why this PP CRO was selected in the, in the tight round. And I have to say, they made a really good job. The second P A CRO is worth mentioning as well. Because their offer was also very price-wise. They knew what the client is searching. They understand immediately that they want to do prophylactic submission. And not only, actually, this second CRO, which starts on P, um, has offered also a additional regulatory support. And this CRO is developed by the regulatory team. So they, they knew what they were doing. I liked their offer 
and also the number of sites which they have selected. So if you compare it to the first P, they have offered 24 countries, so it's a little bit more compared to the 20 countries and they decided also to identify 200 sites. So you can see the numbers are pretty much the same. In terms of the services, they also proposed full scope, EDC uh, support. So it, it's, the, the proposal was very similar to, to these two P's. And um, uh, in terms of the price, they were just a little bit more expensive. So they offer was 280,000 euro. This also included pretty big discount, but also free regulatory support for uh, the previous phase um, that was about to end up. Also, they tried to keep the communication on a very hot line. So like they tried to follow up with the sponsor before the initial uh, proposal was prepared to understand. They have been asking a lot, what do you need? What are you expecting from us, etc. So this kind of communication, if you are doing bid defense, is a key to the successful communication with your client. The second thing is when they prepared the, the proposal, they have sent it immediately and then they have followed up directly with the client. Okay, please review it and then get back to us because we would like to know your opinion and to see what additional can be changed. Now we come to the third P and I have to say I was pretty much surprised with their initial proposal because they have proposed the same what the, the first CROs are doing. So the full scope, EDC, regulatory support and the prophylactic submission. And the price, what they came up with was 41,521. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing out something. So if you look at the price, you could see that something is missing. And also one of the catchy moments was that they came up with the claim that they have performed the feasibility already and it's for free. Which, you know, I like to say there's nothing for free in this world. So having in mind the price 41,000, I certainly have missed the site ID costs on this one. And um, yeah, so there was necessary additional, additional communication with the, with the CRO. But they came up with really good solution, 18 countries and 160 sites identified, which was pretty great. And why is that? It is because this CRO has the experience in the particular indication. So they have done several similar clinical trials in the recent five years and they knew very well their sites. That's number one what the client was searching for. They were experts in the Central and Eastern Europe region. That's the requirement of client number two. So even despite the weird price offer, which they did in the first proposal, they managed to catch the attention of the client and this uh, moved them forward on the next round. Those three PCROs went forward and uh, they made pretty pretty decent job in terms of the communication. In the second round, those three P's managed to move forward and were selected for further communication with the clients. Now, let's, let's start again to see what the offers were because they have changed a little bit with the requirements of, of my client. So the first P, they have increased the budget from um, 220,000 to 370,000 because this was uh, already more informative. There were more detailed activities such as project management, um, medical writing, regulatory affairs, feasibility, etc. So still, this first P, I have to say, they were very, very keen on communicating till the very last moment. And they made a really good job. The second P, CRO, has raised the offer from 280,000 to 427. But again, they have been bidding on the additional free regulatory support. And also they included more um, a very price-wise protocol writing preparation, feasibility, regulatory services. 
So yeah, um, again, this CRO made perfect decision in keeping the tight communication. And we come actually to the third CRO, the winner, and I will share now the hurdle that we have experienced because from their initial offer of 42,000 euro for the prophylactic submission and feasibility, the second offer was 1 million and 32,000 euro, which the sponsor honestly expect, uh, didn't expect and they were really shocked when they have heard the price. Nevertheless, the sponsor wanted to work with this CRO because of their uh, location, positioning and they knew their sites. So what we had to do is to keep a couple of conversations with them and um, we have managed personally uh, to, to lower down the price from 1 million euro, which we couldn't uh, simply afford from the sponsor, uh, side to uh, 440, 50, 60, something like that, 1000 euro. So, the last CRO who was awarded with the project, they, on the first, they did not listen well. But what has happened is that after a couple of conversations, they understood the client need and this has helped them to win the project. So, despite whether you are in a big, small or medium sized CRO, you are doing the business development. You have the hardest responsibility of them all to bring the successful clinical trial and new project to your team. So, the takeaway message would be if you are invited or you, if you manage to bring the attention of your client, you start from the very beginning the communication. Try to listen from the very beginning what the client wants, what they need. And after that, do proposal, do first proposal, then you can make a couple of updates, but always have in mind what is the client need, what they are searching for, what, what, what we can provide them. Because every single client, especially in biotech, they are trying to save some money and also they search for value. A value that a large CRO cannot give them because of the simple reason they have too many projects. So they always search for the special connection. This is what the biotech wants. They want someone dedicated who is making their promises come true. Remember this, I hope it was helpful. Uh, we'll be sharing in the future more content for the business development because there is no particular sales plan for the clinical research. And actually it is good because there are really a lot of specialists in the clinical research who are trying to approach new clients, whether you are the owner of the company, whether you are business development director or manager, you have to keep the communication with the client because a lot of people rely on you. And that's the simple truth. Do not try to sell your ass under any circumstances. Sponsors do not like that. If you send a proposal for 750,000, then suddenly you are able to lower it down to 500,000 and then you are able to do all the changes. This just simply shows that you don't know the indication and you want to win the project under any circumstances. Do not just receive the offer and just send it and don't follow up or anything else. This just shows that you don't give an F about the client. And actually me as a CRO owner, I would not tolerate such an approach to, to my clients because if you are doing business development for me, you are representing my brand. So please have this in mind. The whole pharma industry is a people's business. I'm trying to explain this since the past five years. If you are keen on making business, you have to know each other. It's very intimate and that's why it's so hard because you have to win the trust and like this it's in general everywhere if you want to get the money and if you want to get the job done prove it first if you liked our content hit the subscribe button we'll be uploading regularly 
content related to clinical research. If you have any questions or comments, do not hesitate to share them in the comment section below or feel free to contact me at any time.